Hey guys, and welcome to the Costume Kid Holiday Special. Today, we're going to be continuing our Mandalorian costume with the gloves, boots, cape, and the undersuit. So this episode is not going to be as much building as the previous ones were, where we made the helmet, the armor, and the belts. But today, in the true holiday theme, we're going shopping. Alright, so the first stop, like usual on the show, is the thrift store. There's a few different pieces of clothes that I'm trying to find, hoping to match similar shades of brown, and there's some different patterns, but we'll see what we can find. This was a quick and successful mission at the thrift store, which is always very nice. The next stop is the fabric store. For the cape, I'm looking for something fairly lightweight, but also kind of rugged. Last stop is the hardware store to get some gloves. All right, here we are with our full haul. It's kind of boring looking, a lot of browns, but I'm actually very, very pleased with what I got. I'll dig into the specifics of his clothes and his cape fabric and these boots later on, but I think the first thing I want to make are his gloves. So Mando's gloves are actually made out of two pairs of leather gloves. The first ones are this yellow pair that I just bought from the hardware store, but I think they're the same type that I used for my Freddy Krueger glove in the past. And then over top of that, he has a pair of black leather gloves. Now, these can get pretty expensive, so whatever type of black gloves you can find is just fine for this costume, but these ones I already had lying around from a previous costume, I think either Kylo Ren or Batman in the past, but we're going to need to cut the fingers off of these. Once I cut the fingers off, I didn't need to glue them or anything, I just wore them on top of each other and they worked. So then I thought it would be a good idea to weather them with black shoe polish like I had previously done on the armor. Problem. Problem. I don't think this shoe polish is coming off very easily. Let me try water. Well. Uh, leave it to me to just ruin this glove, so uh, to fix this, I think I am going to paint them, because I don't really have any other choice. I have this yellow spray paint from the Joker vest, which is good, because these were kind of the wrong color to begin with, and this is more accurate. Alright, so while it is drying, I'm going to make the piece that goes on the back of the hand out of some 4mm craft foam. I just drew the basic shape and cut it out of foam, and then I cut some channels in the back, which I glued up to create some folds, the same thing I did on the chest armor. But I didn't bother spray painting these, I just hand painted them, they're kind of a tan, and then masked off to create a little blue triangle on them as well. I glued these on with hot glue because it works, and I really didn't see a reason that you would need them to be removable, but you could attach them with some Velcro. But now, these yellow gloves are dry, so we can put them together. Just pull the black gloves over the yellow ones, and boom, you're good to go. These turned out pretty cool. All right, moving on now to Mando's boots. These are some boots that I picked up from the thrift store for $10, and I quite like them. I think the only thing I'm going to do to them is actually paint uh, around the soles here because it's kind of a lighter brown, and I want them to be black. So maybe for the first time, I'm actually gonna use black shoe polish on a shoe.
Okay, so I think that's it for the boots at the moment, but on top of them, he's got some shin armor, I guess, and it's different for both boots, so that's what we're gonna make next. I started by making a cylinder that fits around my shin and then added detail that I see in the picture uh, with some other interesting cuts and some straps that I made out of the 2mm thin foam and there was also a raised piece down the middle that I made out of the floor mat foam which I uh, first cut on an angle and then did the old scoring a line and opening it up with a heat gun technique. I was able to glue together some pieces with contact cement, but I waited on some of them because I'm going to need to paint them different colors before I glue them. And then I cut some more half inch PEX pipe and added some foam caps to make more ammo cartridges like I made on the bandolier. So where his right shin has a piece of armor, his left one is really just a leather wrap. And so for that, I have had this in my scrap fabric bin for years because I knew I would make something out of it. So I'm just going to cut a piece of it to wrap around my shin. This was the same basic process, but obviously it had some different details. So I cut some different straps out of the two millimeter foam and I also made a little pouch. Uh, this one won't be functional like the one that's on the belt to fit my phone, but I just used a piece of floor mat foam and wrapped it in two millimeter craft foam to make it look like it's a pouch at least. Uh, I also layered a bunch to make a detail on the bottom there and that's pretty much it. Now it's time to paint. For painting, there's like a million shades of brown. So I had to label them all and section them off so I know to paint the right ones the right color. Uh, but I used some lighter brown, some darker brown, some black here and there. Uh, if you don't have all of these paints, that is totally fine. I had them lying around from previous projects, but you could always just paint them with a lighter brown and then mist over them with some black to darken it. You know, light misting would be medium brown, a uh, heavy misting would be a dark brown. You see where I'm going with this, so yeah. I glued on all the straps and then connected the back with pieces of Velcro so that I can just leave it as one piece but strap it together around my leg without having to, you know, put my foot through it. And that is it for these shin pieces here. I am really digging how each of them turned out. All right, so now we are moving on to the base clothes that go underneath all of the armor. So I will show you what I got here from the thrift store. They were just a few dollars each. So we have some brown women's pants. Very happy with these. We have a brown long sleeve turtleneck and another brown long sleeve shirt. Uh, it's a little bit of a different shade and a little bit of a different texture in it. But you might be wondering, Dave, why did you get two shirts? Well, this is so that I can cut up different parts of them. I think we're going to shorten the sleeves on one and maybe shorten the body on one so you wear them over top of each other and it'll look like, you know, different layers because that's kind of what he has, some different vests and other stuff. So we're going to do that. I put both the shirts on and then held up part of the armor so that I could see where I need to make my marks to cut the body of it short. All right, Mando's uh, turtleneck crop top. Here we go. Let's make a short sleeve now. I then made a quick no sew hem by flipping it inside out and then folding over the edge and gluing it down with just hot glue, which works perfectly fine for a nice clean edge. Mando's undersuit has a lot of stitching around it with some different patterns, and you could actually sew it, but I don't really want to. So I think instead, I'm just going to fake that by drawing some dashed lines with a silver Sharpie. Some of these I saw in the picture, but I might have made up some of them on the pants. 
But that is it for all of the alterations on all of the clothes. The last thing to make would be his cape. So I bought two yards of this fabric right here. Uh, I paid about 14 bucks for it, but I really, really like the texture that is in it. It may not be totally accurate. I think his is more of a black or a dark gray uh, rather than this brown, but I like it. I laid the whole thing out over my table so I could cut it down to size. I made it 30 inches, which was my shoulder length plus an extra 12 inches. I cut a hole for the neck and then laid it on top of my dummy, trying to figure out how I want it to look. One side is pulled over further and the other is a little bit shorter. And then I folded over the fabric and glued it down to create some pleats. I did this following a Facebook post that I found on the Mandalorian Costumers Guild. It was super helpful to figure out where all those pleats go, so I linked it below for you guys. As for the bottom edge of the cape, it's a little frayed in season one, but in season two, there are entire holes in it. So I just took the scissors to them, made some snips all along the bottom and cut some holes until it was sufficiently beat up. I then thought it would be a cool idea to set it on fire because why not? And it did give it a cool look, especially around those holes. But if you do this, make sure you do it outside so you're not gonna burn your house down. And obviously ask your parents, or have them help you. Don't just go tell them that the costume kid told you to play with fire, okay? I dusted the bottom of the cape with a little bit of black spray paint just to complete that effect. But now, this is done, and that's it for everything else I'm building in this episode. But now I'm gonna do something that I know you've been wanting for a while. Because at the end of every episode, I'll make some armor and then be like, here's the finished armor. Without saying how to, you know, attach it to the costume. So now we're going to attach everything to the costume. All right, so this is all of the armor that I have made so far in the series, and now we are going to attach them. They don't all need to be attached, which is good. The shin pieces are just gonna go over my legs. Uh, the gauntlets, obviously, you're just gonna put on, and the bandolier, I can just put on like a belt. But that leaves a few select armor pieces that I'm going to need to attach in some way to the shirt and the pants. So I think I'm going to start with this abdomen piece and uh, we'll go from there. I just glued this piece straight onto the shirt, which should be fine, but I think for the rest of the armor, I'm gonna leave them removable so that you can put the clothes on and then attach the armor. And I think I'm gonna do that with Velcro. I put Velcro where I wanted the cape to lay on the shirt as well as where the chest piece will go, which covers up the end of it just a little bit there. But make sure when you're attaching stuff like this, the regular adhesive that's on the back of the Velcro is not strong enough to hold two pieces of fabric especially together. So I always put hot glue on the back of them to reinforce and that really soaks into the fabric and makes a much stronger connection. For the shoulder pads, I put a bit of elastic on the back of them. I had this dark brown stuff left over from when I made Captain America's chin strap. But I like this idea because it would be much harder for them to come off or restrict your movement when they're on your shoulders. I had to put the pants and some of the costume on so I could figure out the right spot to attach the thigh pieces with more Velcro. And the knee pad held on with more elastic. And with Velcro on all of these armor pieces and on the clothes, I am finally ready. After a month of work so far, at long last, I am ready to suit up for the very first time as the Mandalorian. Oh, <laughs> 
Ooh, this thing suited up is pretty awesome. But now there's just one last piece I need. Thank you guys very much for watching this episode of the Mandalorian cosplay series. If you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and share it with your friends. If you have any questions on this build, make sure to leave them in the comments section down below. The series isn't over yet though, I've still got to make his jetpack, some weapons, and I might make Baby Yoda. I will see you guys right here next year, so make sure you subscribe.